Hi everyone, this is Peter, and I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude for joining us today. If you're finding as much joy in listening to History Shorts as I do in researching and sharing its fascinating topics with you, be sure to click that subscribe, like, and share button wherever you're tuning in. Spread the word to your friends, and don't forget to leave a review. They do matter. Now without further ado, let's dive into our latest episode. Since the First World War, the story of Alvin York has been often used as an example of unwavering bravery and heroism. But did you know that even in today's world of a Hollywood exaggerating its depiction of warfare for better effect, it still pales to York's real actions on the Western Front in 1917? I'm your host, Peter Zablocki, and this is History Shorts. Hollywood movies have tried to recreate the story of Alvin York, most notable in the 1941 Gary Cooper vehicle, Sergeant York. Yet they somehow failed to capture the unbelievable essence of the man and the action that earned him the Congressional Medal of Honor. Alvin Cullum York was born on December 13, 1887, in a rural area of Tennessee. He grew up in poverty, one of 11 children in a large farming family. York received limited formal education, attending school only sporadically due to the demands of farm work. But despite his lack of formal schooling, he developed strong values and a deep religious faith that was shaped by his upbringing in a devout Christian family. In 1914, York experienced a religious awakening that led him to embrace pacifism and adopt the principles of the Church of Christ in the Christian Union. When the United States entered World War I in 1917, York initially sought exemption from military service as a conscientious objector due to his religious beliefs. However, after reflection and consultation with his pastor, York came to believe that serving his country was consistent with his Christian values, and he ultimately agreed to serve in the military. Following the April 1917 congressional decision to declare war on Germany for its unrestricted submarine warfare, the United States wasted no time in mobilizing its forces. Under the command of General John J. Pershing, the American expeditionary forces played a crucial role on the Western Front, where they fought alongside the British, the French, and other Allied forces against German troops. American soldiers participated in major offenses, including the Battle of Bielowood, the Battle of St. Mikhail, and the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. The latter was one of the largest and most significant military operations undertaken by the Allied powers in which they attempted to force Germany to give up its war effort. Despite facing determined resistance from German forces, the American Expeditionary Force made significant advances during the offensive, gradually pushing the enemy back and capturing key strategic positions. On October 8, 1918, during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, Sergeant Alvin York's battalion, part of the 328th Infantry Regiment, 82nd Division of the American Expeditionary Forces, found themselves pinned down by intense German machine gun fire near the village of chatel Chiry in northeastern France. York's battalion, along with other units of the AEF, faced a formidable German defensive line fortified with machine guns, barbed wire, and trenches. Despite being vastly outnumbered and facing overwhelming enemy fire, York and a small group of soldiers from his unit, led by his commanding officer, Lieutenant George Edward Buxton, devised a daring plan to outflank and neutralize the German machine gun positions. Under heavy enemy fire, York and his comrades maneuvered around the enemy flank, moving stealthily through the rugged terrain of the Argonne Forest. York, armed with only his trusty M1917 Enfield rifle and an M1911 pistol, demonstrated exceptional marksmanship skills, picking off German soldiers with deadly accuracy as they advanced as if he were back in Tennessee hunting squirrels. As they approached the German machine gun nest, York and his men launched a surprise attack and caught the enemy off guard, only to find themselves pinned down. Despite fierce resistance from the German defenders, York left his unit and by himself, pressed forward, leading a one-man army assault and personally eliminating several enemy soldiers with precise rifle fire. He kept on shooting and running to a new position before shooting again, giving off a perception that the American force was much larger than the handful of men now pinned down by the machine gun nests. And those machine guns were spitting fire and cutting down the undergrowth all around me. Something awful, York would later say. And the Germans were yelling orders. You never heard such a racket in your life. I didn't have time to dodge behind a tree or dive into the brush. 
As soon as the machine guns opened fire on me, I began to exchange shots. All I could do was touch the Germans off as fast as I could. So I was sharpshooting. All the time I kept yelling at them to calm down. I didn't want to kill any more than I had to, but it was they or I, and I was giving them the best I had. In the heat of battle, York's leadership and bravery inspired his fellow soldiers to press on and they succeeded in capturing the German machine gun positions along with dozens of enemy soldiers who surrendered or were taken prisoner. York's lone action effectively silenced the enemy's roughly 30 machine guns and allowed his unit to advance and achieve their objective. In total, the man from Tennessee killed 25 enemy soldiers, and when the German commander surrendered to him, Alvin walked down from his lone action to rejoin his men with 132 prisoners in tow. For his extraordinary courage and heroism during the battle, Alvin York was awarded the Medal of Honor, the United States' highest military decoration, as well as numerous other awards and decorations, including the Distinguished Service Cross and the highest military honors of France and Italy. The accounts of York's heroism have been corroborated by multiple sources, including eyewitness testimonies, official military reports, and historical records, underscoring the authenticity and importance of his actions. As the United States was gearing up for another war more than 20 years later, Hollywood turned to America's hero, York, to inspire the countless young men going overseas. The 1941 film, Sergeant York, received widespread acclaim upon its release and was a commercial success at the box office. Critics praised Gary Cooper's performance in a lead role, which earned him the Academy Award for Best Actor. The film was also nominated for several other Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Supporting Actor. Yet although the film's enduring popularity has cemented Sergeant Alvin York's place in American history as a legendary figure and national hero, the true story behind his heroic feats is even more memorable than fiction. Now, if we could only remember it for how it really happened. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to check out History Shorts on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your shows. You can also visit HistoryShortsPodcast.com.